avoid bad jokes. <laughs> but currently we have no elected members in the chamber. Sarah, where'd you get that bridge from behind you? Uh, actually, good question. Um, let me double check for you. That just looks pretty cool, that's all. It is. This is my inspiration, so hold on. Carmen, do we have a quorum? We're just working on quorum at the moment. Who are, we, who, who are we expecting? I'm just happy to remind you of members of the committee. I believe Mark Donovan. Yes. Would be the one that we're missing, and maybe Paula. I just sent through a link, Norm. I think it's Tom's to Norm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hello, Maxine. Hi. I think I've sorted out my I've sorted out my uh, internet problems. I did a reboot on the laptop and it seems to be better, but this morning was terrible connection. I know. It goes on. Oh, at least you've got it sorted for the important part of the day. Yeah, that's right. Although that this morning's um, session was really helpful mm. to like canvas some ideas and see where people with what their thoughts were and to hear those um, uh, outsiders talk about um, their experiences is really helpful too. Mm. I'm not a formal member of the committee, so I no, don't I count know. towards yeah, quorum. You count in our eyes. Absolutely. Um, yes. Um, Angela will be late, so we're we're one down. For some understandable reasons, the the numbers because the the government side didn't have their sufficient numbers, so that committee collapsed. So this may be the second in my history, but we'll see how we go. Can I just check, am I right? Is Councillor Bunting still a member of this committee? No. no. I we'd result, I just note on the, on the cover page of the agenda, his name is still listed there. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good point. He's not, definitely not, and yep. that was removed. So um, Amy will... We'll uh, just update that for next time. Amy or Carmen will no doubt... Um, assist us. We're waiting on Councillor Larry, Naidu Rolf, McPherson, Donovan. There's no other, and the Mayor, there's, and Mungo, of course, is here, Mungo Norm. Um, there's no other members of the committee now in terms of this sheet. I've got Mark and Paula. I am here, and so's Mark. We're just logging on. Uh, so. Yeah, Mark, which, the real Mark, Donovan? Real Mark. <laughs> Real Mark. Now, I'm not interested in the other Mark because he's not in the, on the committee anymore. He's Monday. So, right, the real Mark Donovan is here. So, that's good. So, what is that in terms of number? We do now have quorum, Martin. So, we are able to begin. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Right. Um, in accordance with the standing orders, I now formally declare uh, open. Um, uh, the meeting of the Environment Committee and a special welcome to Councillor Van Oosten as well, who, who's not technically a member of our committee, but a strong participant. Um, it is my intention in accordance with the practice that we've observed on the hearings and community committee, amongst others, 
uh, following um, uh, norms uh, appropriate uh, addressed to us, uh, I will then hand over the chair to Deputy Chair Sarah, as has been the practice with two other committees. Uh, Manga Norm, we're, we're in your hands, sir. Yep. Uh, tēnā koutou. Uh, Kararoi te korai o te atua. Ano, the cloak of our Heavenly Father let us open our meeting with a karakia. No rere me ino e tātou. Uh, e tō mātou matu i te rangi, tēnā mātou ki a whakamui meti, ki a whakawheta, te kia koe, mauri o mai o monākitanga, hei tia ki, hei arataki tō tātou nei whiri, whiri, kōrero i tēnā i ahi-ahi, ko i kolati o ki tō mātou āriki. Āmene. Um, Mr Chairman, if I can just quickly translate that, um, just uh, sort uh, strength, love and guidance in our discussions today. May it be thorough, may it be articulate, and may, maybe it, may it be for the greater well-being of our town, of our city. Kia ora Norm, thanks for that. Um, kia ora koutou, welcome to today's Environment Committee meeting. We'll start with, um, uh, and you will have noted it is quite a short meeting, so we'll also need to be very efficient today um, because we've got some important items uh, in this afternoon's workshop, but I'm, I'm sure, as usual, we'll all be very succinct. Um, we've got uh, apologies first. Uh, I've Angela... Uh, Councillor Andrew O'Leary has put in apologies for lateness. Are there any other apologies? No. Um, uh, Chair Martin, well, uh, Martin, would you like to, to, I'll move that, would you like to second? All in favour? Carried, thank you. Um, confirmation of agenda. Uh, I'll move. Councillor Donovan, would you like to? Sarah, I'd Ma like to. Would you like to second? Yes. Sarah, I'd like to raise something. Now. Oh, yes. This meeting was listed as in Zoom, so I, I planned for it to take it at home when some construction happened, as I mentioned to you on the phone half an hour ago. I then thought I'd come in here and take my office, but staff upstairs had told me it was going on down here. I would have come in here anyway because I'm part of the bubble that does come in here. So mm. I'm sort of... I've been rushing around all over bloody town trying to find the meeting, I guess. So could we have information about where the actual meeting is and, and whether there's an option to have it in person, especially for the in-person bubble, please, for these committee meetings? Yes. Um, apologies for the confusion. I'm not sure what... I'd have to look, go back and look and see what messaging was put out in terms of the meeting. So we'll make sure that that's very a lot clearer next time. Thanks, Dave. Um, all right. Are we... So I've moved that and uh, Councillor Mark Donovan, you second that. Uh, all in favour? Thank you. Um, declaration of interest. No, nope. thank you. And public forum. We do have um, a presenter today for public forum, uh, Hannah Huggins, uh, presenting on item seven, uh, the update on the climate action plan. Is Hannah in the Zoom room? Carmen, do you know if... Is, she is just joining, um, so okay. we'll just take her a moment. Cool, thank you. Kia ora, Hannah. Kia ora. Thanks, Thanks for coming to present. Um, you've got five minutes, and um, we'll leave some time there for questions as well, if there are any. So uh, the floor is yours. Awesome. Kia ora. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. I hope you and your whānau are all doing safe and well during this time. Um, when I was thinking about what I was going to say for these five minutes, uh, I'm sure I felt like every climate activist over the past 30 years, because I felt like I've already said it all before. Uh, I've come to present to this council multiple times over the years and repeated the same mes message. Uh, that we require drastic systemic change that recognizes the social impacts of climate change. Um, when I first presented to this council, I was 15 years old. I was in my third year of high school and only just beginning my journey as a climate activist. Um, I'm now 18 years old. 
um, heading into my second year of university, flatting for the first time, experienced my first relationship, experiencing my first job at GoEco, um, running the Climate Action Project. So a lot has changed in my life over the past three years, but still my message remains the same. The warming of the planet is occurring at an unprecedented rate that is already affecting climate extremes and the people who rely on this planet to survive. As a council, you are obligated to do everything in your power to drastically reduce our emissions and mitigate the warming that's already occurred. In January, Lake Ngaroto was closed because extreme temperatures were killing our eels and birds. Last year, we experienced our hottest winter and I'm sure we all went through the uncomfortable hot and dry summer this year. Climate justice is what the community wants. It's important to us. I applaud the work that staff are doing and to those who are continuously working to make climate action a priority, but I also simultaneously recognize that what the council is doing is not enough. It is not the urgency that was promised and it continues to be unambitious goals, not real action. So as I said before, a lot has happened in my life in the past three years, and I'm learning as I grow up that everything can change in an instant. A lot can happen and a lot should happen in the next eight years, the, in the next eight years we have to half our emissions at a minimum and the 28 we have to get them to zero. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Thank you, Hannah. Um, do I have any questions for Hannah at the moment? Dave, Councillor Dave. Sorry, you're not seeing. I've just got a, it, it, there's a small lag, but it comes through in the chat. So okay, we'll, um, we'll remember that. Someone... Thanks. Yep. Um, look, kia ora, Hannah. Hannah, um, thank you for your submission. One of the, uh, a question, of, uh, not on climate change and Hamilton City Council's response, um, over 60% of our CO2 emissions in Hamilton are caused by transport. Um, when the previous government embarked on the new Hamilton bypass of the Waikato Expressway, at the south end of Hamilton, there was proposed at that time back in 2009, which was <laughs> when you were five, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> um, proposed that uh, there be PT, particularly bus lanes, um, added to the uh, off-ramp, which is sort of the Riverley uh, Road, Riverley sort of gully area. Um, we, our council has just been told by NZTA that they have no funding for that after 13 years. Um, have you got any comments on that sort of problem we're facing when the government is still building highways, but not building any PT elements into them despite its own policies and the climate crisis? Thanks, that was a speech, was it? Yeah. <laughs> it's always timing me. Yeah, that might be my time up. I don't know if I'll be able to respond. No, uh, sorry. Um, I'll just, I mean, the message that I speak here is the same message I have for the government. What the government is doing is not enough either. And all the decisions that need to be made in New Zealand by everyone who's making decisions at this point need to take into consideration the fact that we are in a climate crisis. So I appreciate and understand that there are um, certain restrictions placed on the council based on the um, unambitious goals and the lack of action from the government. But there are still um, actions that this council can take that um, haven't been taken yet to be more ambitious about what we can do with this climate change strategy and being more urgent um, because our emissions aren't being reduced in Hamilton. And um, 60% 60, 60 of that, a portion of that will be coming from the fact that the government isn't helping you guys out as they should be, but um, not all 60% of it. Correct. Um, are you aware that there's about 60,000 vehicle movements a day between the Cambridge area and Hamilton along that stretch of expressway and uh, very few bus services at the moment and that this was a part of a plan by the regional and city councils to divert 
a lot of those private vehicle trips onto public transport. Um, yeah. And uh, what would you say about the example that's not setting? Well, I guess um, the message that I have here today is the same message that I would repeat everywhere. And um, this is the way the Waikato region is constructed. It gets convoluted between different councils and um, there are massive complications and bureaucracy to this. Um, but there's still the reality that we need to re be reducing our emissions. And um, I'm, not, I'm not the councillor sitting around the table. I don't know how to work that out. Um, but I do know that the community wants better and the community wants us to um, have a safe climate reality. Thanks, Hannah. Maybe you should be a councillor sitting around the table to help us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Thanks, Councillor David. Are there any other questions? That... I'm not, I haven't seen anything come through the chat. So um, we'll firstly just um, thank you, Hannah, for continuing to um, come and present to us and advocate for action on the site. Um, I recognise, you know, the time and commitment that that takes. So thank you. Um, right. We're moving on to confirmation of the Open Environment Committee minutes um, from 30th of November 2021. Um, do I have a mover for those? Yes. Um, thank you, Councillor Dave. Uh, mover in, in Mango Norm. Um, seconding that, uh, all in favour? Thank you. Um, we're now on to the Chairs report, a joint Chairs report today. Um, I think it, it largely speaks for itself. I guess one comment there is just around the urban tree strategy. Um, we've heard feedback from elected members on that since this was written, um, and we're looking at how we take that into account. But um, there are still, we're hoping, some ways to move forward in this space, even if it isn't um, as quickly as, as would maybe have liked. So um, we'll, we'll provide updates on that. Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, thank you. I also want to uh, note the uh, 2 2000 correspondence. And I'm wondering if in receiving the Chair's report, we could just add that the um, the committee notes the correspondence, applauds to 2000 on their ongoing work and uh, re re reply accordingly. And of course, this is just, this is an example of an organisation uh, who has made such a, a tremendous uh, contribution over the years um, to our city and to the life of our city and, and its advocacy. And um, it's not lost on me that in a different life, earlier life, uh, the current mayor uh, also had a journey with TUI 2000 as well. And so I, I just like to note that. Thank you, Martin. And yeah, I would echo the same words. Um, are there any, uh, Councillor Dave, a question? Uh, chair for including the deputy chair in the chair's report. And could, if I could ask the chair who actually wrote the report. <laughs> Uh, we always write reports together, and it's fair to say that I am inspired by my our deputy chair, who's making an excellent contribution, as you can see today. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> um, are, are there any further questions? Otherwise, we'll, we'll go to move the um, item. So I'll move. Councillor Martin, would you like to second that? All in favour? Carried. Okay. Moving on to the substantial, substantive items. Um, oh, and welcome, Councillor Angela. Um, the update on the 2021-2021 uh, Climate Action Plan, and we have Poppy Barron first presenting on that. Thank you. Do you want to copy? Um, so the purpose of this report is to provide an update on how we're progressing with the actions outlined in the 2021-22 Climate Change Action Plan. So this is the second monitoring report um, for this year's action plan, with the first one being provided in November last year. 
Um, and yeah, the second one is on an attachment one, so pages 19 to 34 on the agenda. So I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of small changes that we've made based on feedback from the last Environment Committee meeting. So we've included some information regarding the biogenic emissions, which you can find on page 21. Um, we've outlined the action that we're taking to reduce these emissions or the key project that's planned. And we've also highlighted some projects to reduce energy consumption in the council report as per the staff action from the last meeting. And we've included um, ongoing behaviour change projects for energy as an, as an action in the monitoring report as well. So this is in response to um, elected members' concerns and questions, I suppose, around making sure that we're not just relying on the changes to the grid or the increases in renewable energy, but making sure that we are kind of bringing our staff along on the climate response journey as well um, and looking at what actions we can take to reduce consumption. So in line with that, we've also added um, actions around the waste and fleet behaviour change projects as well, because we know these are things we can work with our staff on to reduce consumption in those spaces too. Lastly, I just wanted to note that um, there have been some changes to the Climathon event that we uh, mentioned on page 19 under capacity building. So we were hoping to host a kind of in-person staff event um, as part of the Climate Connect event that's happening this week. But that event's been moved fully online and because of the restrictions um, at the moment, we can't bring staff together anyway. So we do have staff still attending that event, but yeah, it's just moved to an online event and that's changed since the report was written. So on that note, I'll take the rest of the report as read and open to any questions. Thank you, Poppy. And I just have to say, I think the traffic light system that you've got is very helpful. Um, do I have any questions? Councillor Mark Donovan, I know you had a question around the charging network. Did you want to ask that here? Yeah, um, if, if I could, I, I can't find my email that I sent last night. Um, and getting to the age I've got to now, I've got a bit forgetful, so excuse me. Um, but um, great work on what you've put forward, um, Poppy and, and team, I guess. But. Um, I just, uh, I think my question was around looking at uh, the long-term strategy to employ um, AC charging uh, in and around the city. Um, it was, uh, I know that there's, there are some short-term solutions available, uh, you, you know, in the current climate, which, which could be, uh, you know, put in just to sort of tick a box and say, yeah, okay, we did that, but are there, are we looking at other opportunities which might have a slightly more longer term play um, involved? Does that make sense? I'm new, by the way, as well, so I'll just play that card too. Um, That's a really good question. Um, so, uh, Councillor Donovan, I can jump in there. I believe I've heard the question in terms of the long term strategy for AC charging versus. Mm. DC charging. Mm. Um, yes, absolutely. We would. Um, we currently don't have one, and that is something that um, we've been bringing to the Infrastructure Operations Committee, um, and would like to have one in terms of what that looks like, particularly in alignment with the district plan conversations that are currently happening. Yeah. Um, the the one role that we we need to decide is: do we want to be the infrastructure owner, or do we want someone else to hold that ownership, um, particularly in an ever changing infrastructure world? Um, the costs, capital costs for particularly a DC one are quite expensive and and so locations are also important. So those are ongoing conversations and um, we do believe that we need some guidance from elected members as to what that long-term strategy does look like for Hamilton City, um, knowing that um, contactless charging is also currently in development. So you mm -hmm. drive a vehicle over top of a charger and it does, does the transmission. So Currently, it's just not powerful enough to charge a car battery, but you're already using the technology in mobile phones. So it's it's um, how we keep up with the technology, but also what is that long-term vision and what do we want the charges to be and look like? Absolutely. That's that's awesome. Thanks, Evelisa. The um, contactless charging thing is um, quite interesting. I hadn't even considered that. If you could just yeah. put one of those outside my house and I could walk across that each morning before I go to work. <laughs> Yeah, sure, there's DCs to pay on that, so, yeah. 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 
yeah. yeah. We can upsize with some financial contribution. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me personally, so that I can actually spark some uh, life into me at the start oh. of each day. <laughs> oh. I can't comment on that. No. Okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Uh, Councillor Dave. Can, can you confirm for Councillor Mark that they will soon have electric utes available in New Zealand? <laughs> No. Um, yes, I can. Yes. Excellent. They're, Thank you. They're, yep, they're, they're coming. Um, Eon Musk apparently has developed a whole heap, but not sure what they aesthetically look like and whether they match Mark's taste. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit old fashioned. That's not Elon. Um, okay, look, the questions I actually had um, Poppy and Evelisa relate to natural gas uh, issue on page 23. Um, I, drawn my attention to the fact that we weren't the that the building centralization of air conditioning um, was delayed and I, I had a couple of questions one about that I was sort of a bit surprised to understand that um, it was more efficient apparently to have decentralized air conditioning rather than centralized to the big building I inherently would have thought the opposite way around so any sort of tech I'm a bit interested in the technicality of that in a big picture way but secondly the government's indicated that natural gas new installations are being phased out I believe from 2035 or thereabouts um, and I sort of wondered about our strategy in relation to the use of natural gas, which is not a renewable resource, even though it's, I guess, a cleaner resource than um, than other fossil fuels, it's still a fossil fuel. So, um, what's our stand? Uh, is there a strategy to shift to electric over time, or are, are we silent on that? Because there's quite a few. There's five I can see in a row there, implying that natural gas is uh, be out climate change response, if you like. Yeah, so uh, Polly, sorry, uh, Poppy, Poppy could respond to the municipal building one because I'm not too au okay with that one and I can respond to the treatment plants one. Mm. Paul, thanks, Evelisa, and thanks, Councillor McPherson. Um, yeah, so with the um, specific project, I'm not sure if we have anyone from the facilities team on the call. Um, to provide a little bit more detail around the kind of delay and the specifics of centralised versus decentralised. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have that kind of level of understanding of the project, um, but we are trying to reduce um, natural gas use and that's kind of shown through some of the projects earlier in the report as well. Um, and I just think as well, like from the direction that we'll set in the climate change strategy, that will be probably a little bit clearer. Um, so as part of the climate change strategy, which we're talking about in the workshop after this, um, and the climate change policy, we're looking at the idea of kind of a carbon management hierarchy, I suppose you'd call it, um, where you focus on kind of firstly reducing the emissions um, and then replacing any unavoidable emissions with more renewable sources of energy. Um, so I think once we kind of have that level of direction set as well, then we can kind of direct our decisions based on that too. And Eva or Sean, sorry. Um, so, so in terms of, as an example, at the wastewater treatment plant, instead of purchasing in natural gas, it is um, it's about setting up the system to be able to utilise the methane gas that is actually currently being flared off at the treatment plant, and how we can better utilise that as a renewable energy source. Um, and so there is an annual plan uh, proposal that has been brought forward due to the failure of the 11 kV electricity line. So it's about us having that mitigation for when electricity fails um, and to have that backup mitigation using our own energy sources at the plants. And so that was planned for 2024, 25, I believe, was the replacement of the biogas um, generator at the treatment plant to enable us to reduce those emissions at the plants. But it's also recognised that natural gas um, is part of our mitigation measure should electricity fail. So it's working out how best we have that backup functionality. But uh, that, that, what about 
having uh, solar generation yep. or and or wind generation. Is, but I, I just don't understand yep. the. Yep. It's almost like a you saying that, Evelisa, is almost like a backward step to back up yes. to renewable yeah. energy is less renewable energy. Apologies, yes. So the, the solar is something that we have brought through to the Infrastructure Operations Committee in November, I believe, in the GM update report, and it's about what we bring um, forward to elected members um, in terms of the progress of the solar energy projects. And um, also we're looking at hydro energy, like how do we utilize our pipes um, and the water flowing in the pipes to generate energy also, and also wind. So there are all of those um, zero emission energy options and understanding what they are and how we can utilize them um, better um, to replace, as you said, like forward looking and more, more new approaches that are currently becoming more usable because solar energy wasn't really, the return on investment was quite high. And so that's now coming lower and it's becoming more affordable with the payback um, now coming into the three plus years in some instances. Yeah, uh, Poppy mentioned uh, a sort of an energy hierarchy um, meaning what's the, the most environmentally friendly to the least environment. Have we, so is that, I couldn't un hear all of your words, Poppy, it was a bit of an echo, but I understood that you, that's something council's got in mind or, yeah. Yep, sorry, um, hopefully you can hear me okay now, but just stop me if not. Um, so that's part of the work that we're doing in the strategy and the policy development is looking at um, applying a principle of the best way to manage our emissions. So it's not just specific to energy sources as such, but it focuses on avoiding emissions in the first instance, then replacing those unavoidable emissions with more um, renewable sources or sustainable um, sources, and then looking at um, sequestration and offsetting as kind of the last parts of the response. So I just feel like that's quite applicable to the energy um, stuff that we're looking at as well. So will that hierarchy sort of be set out in the strategy so that we can see what the first choice is and, you know, how, what sort of, what triggers us to drop to second, third, fourth choices of energy, that sort of thing? Yeah, so we're including it in the strategy kind of as one of the guiding principles at the moment, um, which we can go into further in the workshop following this. Um, and then it is also in a little bit more detail, I believe, in the policy. It might, for instance, drive um, our, any new construction on buildings, particularly, and uh, even on things like traffic signals and that sort of thing. I'm aware, for instance, that some traffic signals, I'm not sure in Hamilton, are uh, solar, uh, run by solar power cells. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so it's applying it to yeah all the all the different decisions that we make basically through the policy work that the team's working on. Yeah, thank you. Look, mm -hmm. I had another question in relation to uh, the at risk um, orange uh, mon monitoring status on page twenty seven for education and training for cycling. Um, it, I, I just want to understand: Are we talking there about? I understand the delay because of um, COVID, et cetera, but are we talking, once we can get going again, about a sort of a permanent bike, kids on bike education program in the schools that has, you know, traffic cops and uh, regional council as partners and in the schools themselves, that sort of thing? Uh, what's, what's our intention there? Um, so... Councillor Dave, that uh, we currently already have a permanent biking um, training program within schools. So we have a staff, uh, a team member, Cam, who works closely with the 60 plus schools in Hamilton. And but it's uh, the primary and intermediate schools he focuses on. And um, but this is yeah, this is solely around us being not being able to manage that program because of the COVID restrictions and the requirements, particularly within the school environment. Um, and attending those. So um, we would love to continue on with that program and um, hopefully we could pilot um, following the annual plan workshop this morning um, some more um, additions to that in terms of school travel planning. Okay, are we um, 
looking at uh, tying in our part, potential partners, the COPS and the Regional Council, into that program, so it's a joint program? Um, Martin Parks is online, but um, we do work closely, and it's how we do partner and, and the resourcing requirements for those with the um, New Zealand Police and at schools, but Mark and Martin can elaborate more because that sits within his team. Um, generally, the, um, there, there, I mean, there is some pup sort of uh, partnership with other organisations with the, uh, the biking stuff but in schools, but generally we run that programme from within Hamilton City Council. Um, resourcing comes from um, Waka Katahi, which is sort of standard, standard resourcing, but um, funding generally is, is met wholly by ourselves and uh, where we can subsidy from Waka Katai. Okay, because uh, that's sort of a bit disappointing to hear. Uh, the Regional Council has its Reuben the Road Safety Bear program. I'm not sure where that's at. It may be hibernating at the moment, um, but it's not winter, so I'm not sure. Um, the second one is uh, the police. Um, those of us mine and Mark II's age will remember the traffic cops coming to school and laying out a mini road system and showing us how to safely negotiate intersections and roads and whatnot. Um, so, uh, and that was what the local cop would come down with everything in the boot of his car sort of thing um, and lay it out on our, on our netball courts at Fifth Avenue School and that. Um, uh, have we approached the police about resurrecting that? Because, you know, there's nothing that's going to get a cycling programme going better than having masses of little kids cycling because it's relatively safe, both the... The, the physical road situation is, and footpaths and cycleways are safe, but also they're educated how to use them. Uh, and then that flowing through to the higher schools and to adulthood. So, so, so in response to that is, I mean, we, we, we do that as part of our program. Um, so we, we've taken on that responsibility. I understand, yeah, a number of years ago it was it was um, supported by police in that respect, but we do that training. You know, our staff are trained to deliver those programmes and teach those skills. I'm just a bit worried that poor old Cam trying to do mm. 60 schools, that spreads you yeah. Yeah. pretty thin. Councillor yeah. Dave, um, we had a... Dis uh, with, there's an item... Um, for just for consideration for the annual plan around school travel planning, and I, um, Evelise, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but that's kind of the resourcing for what uh, I guess our side of the resourcing um, for what you're talking about, and and I believe staff were going to look at partnership too. Yes. Correct. So, excellent questions, but given we've got um, um, one hour for today's meeting. Um, did you have any other ones? In no, I was to just wondering whose idea it was to have only one hour. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's me. Thank you, Councillor Dave. Mangai Norm. Yeah, kia ora, Tate. Um, being the youngest in the room, I can relate to what Hannah was talking about. Um, so um, I'm on here, was here, um, beating the drum on the climate um, at Kaupapa. I just wanted to... My, my question was around partnership, and th this is like an, um, a climate uh, scorecard, and we can measure and monitor what we can control. But I think there's some real strong influences to the conversation of partnership around how we collectively recognise and, and provide for um, the greater good of climate activity and action and monitoring within our within our door here. Um, obviously, my focus is going to be um, from a partnership with an EV point of view, uh, if relevant and where relevant does the JMA fit in terms of a conversation with us supporting each other around our collective climate strategy and, of course, the other partners, MOE, police, etc. So um, I was just really keen to look at Will this evolve into a scorecard that also in time measures and monitors the contribution towards climate betterment with our partners? Um, kia ora mangai Norm. Um, I'm not sure whether the action plan scorecard that we have at the moment would necessarily evolve into something like that, but we will, we will be working with our partners as part of the um, action plan development for the strategy. 
So we could look at potentially um, creating something out of that um, piece of work. Yeah, so um, so being on the work of the wellbeing co uh, we've got Manuchaki leading the climate action, and so there's lots of great things happening, and we're all singing off the same song sheet, you know, uh, hopefully, and being minor and in tune. Uh, and if we're not, how do we get in tune with uh, measuring uh, ourselves and our overall um, contribution as a city? Uh, obviously, within our within our um, uh, infrastructural lanes that we have as organisations, uh, that would be uh, uh, a real good measurement to undertake. At some time, I'm really keen to see. Uh, actually, I was stoked with this uh, document, and really keen to see how we could also support and lever and 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 uplift our our, our respective uh, mana whenua and tribes and, and the and the Maturanga Māori aspects towards climate activi activity in action as well. Yeah, couple. Thank you, Norm. Um... And that's good feedback for the workshop as well. Is there are there any other questions? Oh, Mia Paula. Thank you. Right. Sorry, I'm not sure you can't see the little. Uh, I did. I did get it, but then I after listening to Mango Norm's quarter, I completely forgot that you, were, <laughs> you had that's a question. Right. I, I don't. I don't take it personally. Don't worry. Um, I have that. I have that effect. Uh, yes. That was because your words were so good. I wonder if my questions will be as good. A couple of three small questions. Firstly, just want to know with this plan, my screen keeps going on to sleep, um, what, uh, what are the next steps with waste? I saw some uh, actions around waste, but they were to do with um, waste plans and new developments. But I'm wondering too, how we make gains in terms of um, wider waste issues, which include increasing the number and the quantity of food waste recycled and also moving to other waste streams that we've known about for some time. Of course, the whole um, diabolical situation with New Zealand and tyres still exists uh, with no proper solutions for tyres yet, and I've been finding that for at least a decade. Um, but there's um, construction waste as well. We've, uh, we acknowledge that by volume, construction waste is an incredible large amount of waste. So I just wonder, in the... Ivalisa, if you can just talk me through. I know you are doing some work, so I'm not telling, saying you're not doing anything. I'm just wondering if we can elevate it here um, as part of what we are doing about climate action. Um, so in response to the question, can we elevate it here? Yes, so there will be a report um, in terms of the Environment Committee. Uh, uh, we report to the Environment Committee on the monitoring of the Waste Minimisation Action Plan, mm -hmm. and that is coming to the next committee, I believe, in April, May, um, when the next committee, um, earlier or mid this year, um, to provide further updates and on the actions that have been taken and the progress being made, both in the construction waste area, the events waste area, um, the education area, and um, the other, um, there's focus areas, sorry, I can't recall off the top of my head, so there's the 32 actions. Um, mm. In regards to tyres, um, Hamilton City Council did provide a submission to um, the Ministry for the Environment, or um, there was a submission to central government on that, um, because they were proposing um, how, how tyres in particular were to be dealt with. So Hamilton City has progressed that through our own um, submission process too. So hopefully it is, um, we get received feedback on that shortly. Cool. Um, I'll comment on that in debate if that's okay. But um, in terms of um, the building, our building and energy, and Dave made some questions, uh, raised some questions about the air conditioning and so on. I know that we've um, done a lot to um, be more energy efficient inside our own building. I just wonder what else progress can be made. I know I'm often one of the last to leave at night up and, and there's a billion lights blazing in that building on many floors with no people in. So I'm just wondering about those kind of initiatives within, within the building. I turn off the floors on the ninth floor. I turn off the lights if I can. Um, so I can comment on some of the activities. So some of the activities are um, the lights are big. Being, um, as the floor, uh, as the upgrades are happening to the lighting areas, they are being put onto sensors, Yay. and so so when so they do 
dim down or turn off when there is no activity and then when someone walks in they automatically light up so an example of that is on the third floor so as we upgrade the inside or interior of the building um, those little minor changes and tweaks are being done to led lighting etc so cool. um, yeah yeah um, so those those tweaks are happening thank you evelisa that's good um, in terms of um, when i uh, first came onto this council and i was um, um, I went into a staff member's room and there was a sustainability scorecard. In fact, he had a, a wall dedicated towards sustainability, and I forget the staff member's name. Lots of action, and this would be four years ago, so bear with. But um, we have a sustainability scorecard or something similarly named. Um, can we report against that also? I haven't seen anything on it for some time. Sean, do you know what I mean? And it was a very uh, impressive piece of work on his wall. It took the whole wall up. Yeah, so we had a we had the sustainability principles, and we did um, do stock takes of sort of actions that had happened um, in relation to those principles. We replaced that with the um, the action plan and the actions that are in this report. So this this has sort of superseded that, uh, and then what what you'll see through the climate strategy and the action, sort of the further action plans that come off that will be um, specific targets um, and actions related to those targets. So that will, um, yeah, so that, I guess that old version has been um, superseded now. Okay, all right. Well, I, without seeing the old version, I'm not quite, I wouldn't know if everything had transferred, but I, I'll take your word for that. Just one final, final question on the rainwater. Um, um, which is an action that's underway. Are we also on board with the interplay between uh, rainwater and the district plan changes in terms of new areas and the ability to incentivize or in, on occasion require, but incentivize uh, rainwater tanks, gray water recycling, those kind of initiatives? Oh, I see Mark's there now. Hi, Mark. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mayor Councillors. Yes, we are looking at that, and yeah, we plugged in. Um, yeah, so further to that, um, the Water Stimulus Programme has got the Water Sustainability Strategy, which will feed into um, those conversations. So that is um, progressing um, with an update being provided to the Infrastructure Operations Committee. So, um, and as Mark said, we are definitely tied into the district plan to make sure those water sustainability um, is are tied up and aligned in all of the conversations we're actually having um, in, in relation to water. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Mayor Paula. And um, Sean, sure, just uh, seeking some uh, clarity around one of Mayor Paula's questions regarding reporting. It was my understanding that we replaced um, the stock take with the wellbeing indicating, indicator report um, and there's indicators for each of the well-beings. Is that right? Oh, you're on mute. Apologies. Uh, yeah, you are correct. And so that well-being report goes is reported through to council, and it does have mm -hmm. um, some of those uh, those measures. Uh, and there's a well-being story, which um, uh, has got uh, more of the detail around what we're doing um, in relation or to achieve um, some of those measures. So that. Um, so if, I, I can't think of the top of my head when the next report is due to go to council. Um, mm. Julie Clawson, do you know when that's due? If you're there? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we were planning to take the next one around September this year. Mm. So it was uh, an annual report. And, and then on top of that, coming directly to this committee, there's updates on the Climate Action Plan, the Nature and the City Strategy, and the Waste Management uh, Minimization Plan. Correct. So the Nature and the City and the Waste Minimization, those are strategies which are overseen by this committee. And so mm -hmm. we have, I think, six monthly reports on each of those um, to this committee. And then the Climate Action Plan, which is the report we're looking at now, that uh, the actions and that 
that comes back to this committee every every committee meeting. Uh, and so that's what that's what we're looking at now. Cool. Thank you, Sean. Um, are there any other questions before we move on? Uh, and do we have a mover and seconder? Um, Councillor Mark Donovan for moving and Councillor Dave for a seconder. I can see you very small on my screen, but I, <laughs> I saw that. Um, is there any debate, Mayor Paula? Good, thank you, Sarah. Um, just want to uh, just put a plug in for having a very tenacious and bold approach around waste. I think we have in setting up the new waste um, system. Um, there are some streams in there that have just taken, in my opinion, I don't like to be negative, but far too long. And it's not, it's not the fault of staff or anything. It's just taken a very long time to make change. Construction waste has been known about for at least by me, at least for 15 years, 12, 15 years. Tyres have been around. I, I was advocating on tyre waste a long, long, long time ago, and we're still talking. With nearly three and a half million tyres produced annually, it's something we can't keep shoving off into the indefinite future. We've got to, um, got to be more vocal about that. So I'm really excited about what we can do in this waste area, and I'd like to see some strength through that area. The second comment I do want to make is I'm really pleased with the comments that Mark said about rainwater and um, grey water in the district plan. I will be watching for that, watching that space really to see what the detail looks like. Um, it's so hard to retrospectively make changes that benefit climate, but you can build them in. You can build them into new areas much more easily, and we need to start looking at incentivising people to do that or um, in some instances requiring it. Um, I like this report, it's nice and easy to read. I, do, I did um, look closely at some of the ones that were described as on track and thought, well, they're on track, but how long is the piece of string? And we're just marginally on track with some of those. The green, amber, and I suppose there would be red if there was something we hadn't done at all, is useful, but it's very simplistic because that green is a big band we could have just started into that space and doing a little and it would be on track or we could have done a lot and nearly be achieved or successful with that. Um, so I know that the update is in there and that's supposed to capture but um, I, I wonder at some stage we might need a little bit more nuance in how we measure the on track aspects of our work. Thought anyway, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks Mayor Paula and Councillor Dave. Um, acting Chair Sarah, <laughs> um, <laughs> like to echo uh, Paula's comments and one of the points she made was something I had in mind too. I was actually looking on page 27 at the um, improving our bus network green and thinking, yeah, the green is a, says yes to that, but the only yes that's happened really in the last two or three years is yes we've agreed to do more but we haven't actually done more yet so I would have it as an extremely pale green me and Paula um, needing to be a deep dark green very quickly um, and the same obviously goes in some other areas it's all very well to plan for improvements in this area um, and perhaps we the nuancing needs to have uh, the, the plan agreement then the resourcing than the implementation aspects to it. So many of these should have uh, sort of at least those three steps built into them to show where we're getting. And I know and sometimes in some infrastructure, we've, we've sort of looked at it in that way as well, some infrastructure construction sort of areas. So I, I'm thinking perhaps in some of these areas we could do, um, we could just nuance it by looking at the different phases of an overall program. Um, the other comment I did want to make is that it was easy to read and thanks to the staff for that. I think this is, this is what we sort of thing we'd be looking for over a long time. We're getting it now, which is, is great. Mm -hmm. uh, we, can, we can comment more meaningfully than we could in the past on these issues. I would plead with staff to challenge us more on some of the solutions. Um, don't wait for 
councillors that um, get uh, get elected after um, raising some environmental issues in public um, before we have new novel ways of tackling climate change issues put in front of us by staff. We can always say no, then it's our fault. But if we're not aware of them, it may be partly your fault too. So, so make it our fault, please, Eva Lisa and other staff. OK, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Dave. Are there any other speakers? I'm not seeing anyone. Going, going, gone. Um, I'll say just a couple of words. Firstly, thank you, Poppy, for this report and laying things out really clearly. Um, I do agree somewhat with the previous speakers. There were some things which I know that this um, traffic light system is looking at not what we really in reality should be doing, but what we have committed to do. Um, but some of those, the dates did seem to have kind of shifted because of COVID and other um, things, uh, but there was still green. So maybe there is some um, place there for, uh, as the previous speaker said, a bit more nuance. Um, but overall a yeah, really clear way to present things. I guess the other point I'd like to make is um, we have some opportunities coming up in this annual plan to actually put some of uh, these things into action. The staff travel plan, um, been talking about it, working on it and here's our opportunity to actually um, drive that uh, and we have other opportunities around our public transport and getting some things on the ground and school travel planning um, so really encourage you when you're considering annual plan um, uh, proposals to think back to what we've committed to around uh, urgent climate action. Kia ora. Right, moving on. Oh no, we need to we need to um, vote for that. So uh, all in favour for um, receiving report. Okay, carried. Thank you. Moving on to the um, Waikato Regional BAT strategy. Do we, we've got Jamie Cyril to present first. Sorry about that. Kia ora Kato, thanks. Um, I guess I've got three minutes, so I'll keep it uh, brief. Um, I've also got Alistair McCulloch from Parks and Open Spaces here, who's also um, uh, an HCC rep on the Waikato Bat Alliance. So he may be able to help with some questions, if should you have any. I guess there's just a quick summary of uh, how we've got to this point. There's, there've been a number of hui with the various representatives of the organisations involved in the alliance that's been kindly facilitated by Waikato Regional Council over the past two years or so. Um, the output of these hui has essentially culminated in this draft strategy that we've, that we've um, put in front of the committee today for endorsement. Um, the strategy ref reflects a range of views, I guess, and, and captures a number of um, components that are kind of relevant to the protection of um, bat habitat and, and um, retaining the presence of bats within the wider region, but also within the city. Um, and it really sets up a really strong framework for, for those parties to really collaborate on an, a range of issues, I guess, and, and um, work together on, on navigating some of those challenges. Uh, the next step for the Alliance is that we've convened a, another hui in late March to, to I guess, loop back um, following endorsement from the, the governance entities such as yourselves. So all, all, my understanding is that all of those parties involved will be seeking some form of endorsement um, for this draft strategy. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, I'm not a bad expert, I think. Alistair knows a few things about bats, but if, we've, if you've got any questions that we, we can't cover off today, we're more than happy to, to loop back. Thanks. Thank you, Jamie. Um, are there any questions? Mango Norm. Hey, Jamie. 
a good um, good plan, having uh, read it thoroughly and, and been involved in the Peacock um, project for some time. Uh, just really keen to understand the, the whakapapa and mātauranga and cultural component within the plan and, and who sits there representing Te Ao Māori. Uh, and and I'm, uh, there's a reference to Thork and presenting to Thork. Um, I'll learn into the aspects of Hepo Mana Ora, but, uh, but who's the yeah, key cultural links? So um, I couldn't tell you the, the individuals' names who have been invited to the various hui's off the top of my head, but I can come, come back to you and confirm who the individuals um, have been. And um, as noted in the report, I guess the um, attendance has been sporadic over that two-year period for a range of kind of um, conflicting probably um, commitments, I guess. And that's why I just wanted to note that in the report and loop back um, with, with Thork and, and Ngāti Wairere around where the drafts has landed. Um, Waikaru Tainui reps to date have been um, Wakatoria Tane and uh, Kahirimu Flavel. Um, and they've attended, and that's where the bulk, my understanding is the bulk of the, the input into this draft strategy itself has come come through. But um, again, I can look back on uh, the uh, kind of research and, and um, work that the consultant did to actually um, provide that input, if that's helpful. Yeah, yep. Well, we can take this offline. Yeah, keen to sort of um, see where, where where more help could be required. Sure. Because uh, you, you kind of respectfully get what you get from mana whenua and there could be a, a targeted skill base maitaranga uh, lever that could be pulled towards the SPAT um, strategy. Yeah, great. Kapai, Thanks, Tom. Kia ora. Kia ora, no, Mayor Paula. So given the um, inherent um, conflict between development and um, bats and mature trees, um, I looked in here, we've known that mature bats like, apart from um, some trials of artificial bat habitat, um, mature trees have played an exceptionally important part. Um, now given that it takes a long time to grow a mature tree, <laughs> I'm just wondering um, how that picks it. Maybe I've missed it in here. How um, our work m works works along um, future. Six, do, do trees have succession? They don't. But you know, replacement of and we lost a lot of mature trees in that last cyclone, incidentally, and they all came crashing down in the wind. Um, but we have a program, I assume, to look at trees now so that they in the future become mature trees which will be part of combating this conflict between development and because we can't just stop development we've got to do something a bit more nuanced around that we've got to so i might i might be able to provide a, a response to that but maybe also pass it to alistair to add anything i guess in the in the um existing urban area we're looking at protecting uh, and providing greater protection for uh, mature trees within within our gully networks as part of the district plan program um, and and we're working through the detail of what those provisions are but i guess that's an example of where hcc is is starting to try and lead in the space in terms of that level of protection of for habitat in uh, existing urban within greenfield areas such as um, Peacock, we've identified uh, future corridors that do align with some existing mature trees, but the intent there is that those are established and get planted up to create really strong green corridors and green links for, for corridor, um, for those key corridors. So Ali, I don't know if you want to add anything in terms of the planting programs or anything that parks are involved in? Yeah, so this is part of that strategy, as part of this strategy that we put forward to the councillors today as well, is to um, collaborate on bat habitat protection and restoration measures throughout the city, working with um, 
uh, Waikato Regional Council, Waipa District Council on the kind of bound, boundaryless planning objectives of where bats move and how they move throughout the city and how we can protect existing um, habitat and produce more habitat through um, ongoing restoration me measures throughout the city. Mm. I guess my, my comment, my question is more relates to not what we're planting, but how we are specifically aiming at planting the type of habitat that bats require. And actually, it's not all indigenous vegetation. It's some of the big trees that they like are um, not native, but they serve a purpose of bat homes. So, we, you know, given that some of our trees are ageing, and as we saw, some of the trees in ill health or older did fall down in the cyclone. How do we set off on a journey of plant planting trees that will be mature enough in good time so we don't have that too much of a lag? Because it takes a long time to grow a big tree. Yeah, especially a big... Oh, sorry. Mayor Paul, I might be able to help um, with that. And um, Councillor Sarah alluded to it um, I think in Martin, Councillor Martin, in their opening address in regards to the urban tree strategy. So um, the tools that Ali and the tools that Jamie have spoken about will be really, really helpful. But um, we are also going to be looking at, um, you know, if an urban tree strategy is not possible, perhaps some policy direction and some principles for how we manage our tree asset in Hamilton to achieve um, the things that you mentioned. Um, what is our succession planning rate? Um, and increase our understanding around that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Paula. Councillor Maxine. Um, thank you. A couple of things that I was um, interested in, uh, firstly around predators and what measures um, you know, the strategy is going to put in place uh, around that. Uh, secondly, um, the use of volunteers and how we might be, I mean, bats, bats do sometimes get a bad rap, but that um, uh, I know that there are uh, neighbourhood groups. I live down um, Wellington Street and there is a group there that, that are uh, building bat habitats and, you know, putting them up along that river uh, way. How are we using those kinds of volunteer groups to, you know, grow the knowledge and, and uh, love of our local bats? So I'm happy to answer that. Um, so currently, um, Hamilton City Council donate um, to the Project ECHO Citywide um, Bat Survey that's um, been completed since, to, uh, it's a long-term study that's been happening since 2011. And um, we use volunteers to help um, bring down the costs of that um, of that study. Um, and the, the, the volunteers help put up the bat detectors all, at, all during the kind of one month that we do the study. And um, they also help analyze the data for that as well. And there's also um, really good um, volunteer groups working in Southern ha Hamilton and helping with the pest control with that. And the pest control is actually really working. So with the Southern Lynx mitigation pest control that's happening around Tiano Park and uh, Fitzroy Park in Southern Hamilton, uh, I was speaking to a Waikato University master's student who's um, looking at the artificial bat roost and she's saying since the pest control has um, has happened in those parks that the um, pup succession rate of the bats has been really good this year. So it actually really does work, the pest control that we are doing in those areas. Right, it's, and is there any intention to um, grow that awareness and involve, um, you know, communities further um, and, and, you know, educate them around the habitats and predators that, you know, are, are risking their survival? Yeah, so that, that's um, one of the, that's two out of the three work streams that this Waikato Regional BAT um, strategy is hoping to provide, which is research and monitoring um, and, and empowerment, so empowering communities and landowners to have knowledge and incentives of of um, the importance of bats and the protection of bats in the, com in the wider community. 
Uh, thanks, Ali. Thanks, Chair. I recognise that we're well over time. Mm -hmm. And I give that back to you. Cheers. Cool. Thank you, Councillor Maxine. Um, if there aren't any more questions, uh, Mangai Norm, would you like to move this? And awesome. And Councillor Kesh, would you like to second this? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we'll go into debate. Are, are there any speakers? I'm not seeing anyone. Um, uh, just very, very quickly, I just wanted to say thank you for the work that you're doing on this. Um, I'm sure it's been a long and a bit of a frustrating process because I know we've talked about this um, a while back and, it, and, and collaboration can take time, but thank you for your work. Um, it was very sobering reading some of the facts and that strategy around the bats and just how sensitive they are to development um you know and a small increase in light could can decrease their population in, in an area by 42 percent um the and and the fact that they they really just don't move on and find a new place if their current home isn't working they stick they stick with it and that means that if they lose their habitat then we lose them too so um this is incredibly important work uh, uh, Mangai Norm. I wanted to um, echo your sentiments and, and mihi katika kia, kia koutou ngā kaimahi hei arata ki to tātene taonga nei. I just wanted to recognise and acknowledge the significant um, respect that we have for this taonga and the uh, mitigation, uh, alleviation and restoration of its public kainga of its home in order to restore the modi of the, the habitat and the taonga that lives within it. So Ali um, and others, uh, tēnā koutou, Demi, uh, great work, kia ora koutou katoa. Thank you, Norm. And Mayor Paula. Thank you much. Look, I um, reiterate the thanks on this piece of work. Uh, I just thought you might be interested in a little bit of history. When I was in the Regional Council, I've said that twice today, actually. But anyway, looking back, there was a student from the University of Waikato who came in seeking a scholarship, some money for studying bats. And I kid you not, we didn't know at that stage that we had the Pekka Pekka bat in Hamilton City. So she got some money to do her original study and from there discovered we learnt a lot more about bats. And so out of that genesis of one really passionate person from the University of Waikato, um, uh, more work has sprung and Project Echo and all of those, those organisations that you've listed in the report, um, colleges and land care and so on, have all been part of that project since then. So it isn't, it's, on one hand, it isn't a long time since we've known about bats, but also it is. It's, there again, it's at least 12 years of, of knowledge, and I look forward to us going, I look forward to us working in a way that supports bad back habitat, but tackles the, the um, gnarly issue that we have, that development and bats don't sit comfortably together. But we do know that with good research, we can get around, around that, and we can allow for bat friendly development and we can have the affordable houses that we need so badly but we can also buy into the protection of the bats and if anybody has not ever done the um, project echo tour i'm not sure that they're doing them now at the moment with covid and all that but go out on a night uh, a night expedition and spot the bats it's really quite cool and you can get a bat detector and have it at your own home as well um, over weekend those are, those are really cool ways of engaging people. And I think we can do some things with uh, developers, the big developers, by getting them to buy into the heart and soul journey, not just the nuisance that a bat can be, but the really exciting environmental opportunity it can be for them and everyone else as well. So, um, you know, I wish you all the best of luck with this, and I hope it proceeds it with pace, because sometimes these things take a long time to set up and... Um, that is a concern. Thanks, Mayor Paula. Um, if we don't have any other speakers, then uh, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Excellent. Carried. Um, and I forgot to mention, Ali, if you have the video of the bat, the baby bat pups roosting, then please share that again because you can't watch it too many times. Yeah, I'm happy saying, to send it no, I don't want to see it. <laughs> it's very cute, I assure you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Um, all right, we're on to our last item. Let's do, if we can, let's be very, very um, succinct with this. So we've got the general manager's uh, report. Uh, thanks, thanks, Sarah. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm happy just to take it as read and answer questions if there are any. Hmm. I'm not, are there any questions? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Councillor Dave. Yep, thank you, Sarah. Uh, Acting Chair Sarah, that is. Uh, the, um, I'm not sure whether General Manager Eva Lisa is there, because I was going to direct this question to her, but you might have to take it, Sean. She's not. Oh, no, she is there. She uh, suddenly heard her name. Um, Eva Lisa, um, I'm wondering if you can confirm in relation to the City Council Workplace Travel Plan that our submitter, Hannah, who was here at the start of the meeting, was five years old when this was first proposed um, at Hamilton City Council, that we have a workplace travel plan and that we've had approximately 100% staff turnover since that time. Um, and I'm perhaps wondering what, whether it's the reason we've got it coming up now is because we've got a whole new set of staff that we need to educate and whether in another 13 years we'll be starting another round of this. Um, so thank you, Councillor Dave. I am, I'm not going to um, engage in how old people are because I've been taught by my parents no, that I'd is in that. And, and so I am, um, in terms of 100% staff turnover. Um, I can possibly confirm that if it was 13 years ago, then Chris Allen and I were here. And um, But if it was later than that, uh, there, there may be some staff still here. So no, there isn't 100% staff turnover, but yes. It has taken a long time, and I am thankful that we now have the opportunity um, to put it um, through our annual plan process. So, so the serious part of that question, Sarah, uh, sorry, yeah. um, uh, Eva Lisa. Acting Deputy Chair. <laughs> is um, how long is it going to take to actually have some, some things happening on this uh, um, that are locked in, that are permanent part, every staff member, start new one and existing one will be offered or encouraged to take part in? Um, so... So during the annual plan, we had a workshop on our workplace travel plan, which provided the inclusion of the draft um, items that were to be included and that were discussed with um, elected members to be included in the annual plan as proposal, which um, will be put forward. So hopefully from um, 1 July onwards, we will have tangible actions for exactly what you've just asked for in terms of our staff and having um, the opportunities to try could I, could I ask why it's having to rely on the annual plan when um, we've been alerted to savings in the staffing budget that are there um, in place now and previous years have, which could have been used towards this as a management tool rather than as a governance decision? Um, so as um, through our Infrastructure Operations Committee and through the Environment Committee, it was requested to go through the annual plan and because of the substantial funding and should elected members choose to allocate some of those savings to this project, that would be um, also a positive in that step to action. Cool. Thank you, Councillor Dove. We did have um, this uh, in a workshop this morning. I'm wondering if, if you uh, want to go I'd into like detail on happy out, to participate sorry, conversation. Out. Is Matt, Chair, that that was not in my diary, that discussion this morning, so I didn't know anything about it. I thought you were having a school travel plan discussion from your text to me during that meeting. Uh, I yes. didn't realise there was a staff workplace one. Yeah, OK. Um, I'm happy to help with facilitating. If, you, if you'd like to drill into that a little bit more, um, Eva Lisa, uh, would you like me to arrange that? And yeah. we can have a quick I, zoom or something. I guess, Madam Chair, I'm not. I'm not trying to comment on the individual solutions. Yeah. I, I'm not necessarily the best person to do that. I am commenting on the massive length of time it's taken to do anything in this yeah. area and the missed opportunities to do that in low cost or no cost ways. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there. 
there should be more opportunity to kind of work through that as we go into annual plan two. So um, I guess let me know if you want to, to, to drill into that further, but for now, point um, made, Councillor Dave, thank you. And we'll, if there aren't any other questions, we will move to the vote. Oh, we'll, I'll move that and um, thank you, Mangai Norm, we'll second it and we'll move to the vote to receive the report. Now, all those in favour and all those against, Thank you. The motion is carried. Noting that Councillor McPherson is dissenting. Cool. Thank you, everyone. That brings us to um, almost to the end. Mangai Norm, could I um, uh, ask you to close our meeting for us, please? Uh, yep. Uh, tēnā koutou. Uh, ke kapito tātene hui. Let us close. Uh, Eti atu a tēnā mātou ke faka kapito tātene hui. Kera roa i tōku koroai. Manaki tēnā mai nā tātou ki tēnā ia. Ia i koi tura tōku i tō mātou ariki. Amene. Just uh, in, in clarification and translation, just uh, sort love, guidance, and achievement in the um, the the mahi we had achieved in our meeting today. Kia ora, Norm. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, should, I'm just thinking we should probably take a, a bit of a quick break before moving on to the workshop. I know we are running a bit. Um, I guess we're getting a bit squeezed for time. Sean, does that does that work? Oh, yeah, I think it needs to be fairly quick. Yeah, we, I think take a quick break. Absolutely. Yeah. Does five to five minutes sound okay, or are there any objections to that? Okay. We'll see everyone back um, at twenty twenty seven past.